I've got both the M3 MacBook Air and the last generation M2 MacBook Air. How much better is the new model? Should you just pick up a discounted M2 or is the M3 really just that much better? Well, that's what I'm about to find out. Specifically, what I'm gonna be looking at here is I've got my last generation M2 MacBook Air. This is the 13 inch MacBook Air, the M2 chip with a 10 core GPU. I'm gonna be comparing this guy against the brand new 15 inch MacBook Air with the M3 chip on the inside. Also starts off at a 10 core GPU when you're looking at the 15 inch version. So 10 core GPU versus 10 core GPU, M2 versus M3, generation over generation. There are several big changes that I'm gonna be breaking down. The new M3 chip, changes to storage, improved Wi-Fi, the new finish, and that whole display situation. We should probably start with a good news, bad news situation. Apple has listened and increased the performance of the base SSD when compared to the M2. The downside, it's still only 256 gigs. With previous versions of the MacBook Air, Apple would use one chip for that base 256 gig storage configuration, but larger configurations would use two chips. For example, the 512 gig option would use two 256 gig chips. That means data could be written to both chips at the same time when wired in parallel, which also meant that the solo chip had notably worse performance. That was rated with these 2024 models that use two 128 gig chips for that base 256 gig configuration. The last gen 256 gigabyte model managed read and write speeds of around 1450 megabytes per second each way, but my new 256 gig M3 version had 1900 megabyte per second on the write speed and over 2700 for the read speed. It's still ridiculous though that Apple was including 256 gigs as a starting option anyway. It's an upcharge of $200 to go to the 512 gig storage, and at that point, you're only $100 away from the 14 inch MacBook Pro, which does start with 512 gigs of storage. I just think it's criminally unacceptable to offer 256 gigs as your base storage option on a laptop here in 2024. I mean, Apple's gonna end up shooting themselves in the foot here because it's gonna give people a reason to drop back to discounted or refurbished M2 versions so that they can invest more money into the storage because most people probably will need to upgrade from that 256. Also tucked away on the internals of this machine, right above the new M3 chip is Apple's wireless chip. It houses both the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi. Apple upgraded the Wi-Fi here from Wi-Fi 6 to Wi-Fi 6E. The big change with Wi-Fi 6E is the addition of the 6 GHz band spectrum alongside 2.4 and 5. That newly allocated spectrum is really helpful in crowded areas, like cities or apartment buildings when there's a ton of different routers all competing for that spectrum, assuming you have a router that supports it. That 6 GHz band can also be used as a wireless backhaul for mesh routers. So you could still see benefits here with that network even if you don't have all Wi-Fi 6E devices in your house. The biggest wireless changes though are going to be coming with Wi-Fi 7. There's a chance we could see some Macs updated with Wi-Fi 7 later this year, but since these things were, you know, just updated, it's going to be at least a year before we see Wi-Fi 7 coming to the MacBook Air line. In my studio, I still have Wi-Fi 6 routers for my primary network, so I ran a few speed tests with both machines on Wi-Fi 6 to see how they compared. Unsurprisingly, on the Wi-Fi 6 network, there, there wasn't much of a difference here. They were basically the same. I actually had slightly better performance on the M2 MacBook Air, but there's a you know big differential in this test. Like You run it and it can go faster and slower, so it kind of averages everything out. I, I don't think there's much of a difference at all thanks to the Wi-Fi 6E here if you're using it on a Wi-Fi 6 network. Luckily, I also had a Wi-Fi 6E network that I could test, so I ran the test again on Wi-Fi 6E to see how that actually differed. Yeah, and, and still there, there wasn't much of a difference, like 960 versus 1000. It, a very small difference between these two machines, even on a Wi-Fi 6E network. 
it's only gonna really make sense if you are in those crowded areas or as that backhaul for a mesh system. So there's still gonna be benefits to Wi-Fi 6E, but at least here in my home, I didn't see a huge difference that would lead me to really necessitate jumping to the newer model for that specific reason. The biggest changes though are yet to come, but before we talk about them, let's take a quick break to thank our sponsor for this video, Journey. And you were all eager to get back to the other stuff, but I just have to show off the Nexa sleeve from Journey, and I promise you, you have not seen anything like this before. The Journey Nexa sleeve is technically a four-in-one sleeve that fits both 13 and 14 or 15 and 16 inch laptops. You get to check this out. So this is the sleeve itself. It has this heathered fabric on the back that I think looks very handsome. And on this side, it's a vegan leather. And you're gonna notice the top here. So the top magnetically closes and hides your laptop inside. You can open it, remove our MacBook Air. And you set your sleeve down on your desk. So first, it could just be a nice little pad to set your laptop on, but you could also set your laptop to the side and use that vegan leather surface as a very bespoke portable mouse pad but that's not what makes this thing so exciting. On the side, it has not only a little Qi charging pad for your AirPods, but it also has a second MagSafe compatible charging pad for your iPhone. Then you just run a USB-C cable out the back to connect it to your laptop or to a power supply, and you can charge your gear wherever you are. I think this is so clever. I love the idea of protecting your laptop while also giving you all these other benefits. There are a bunch of other laptop sleeves out there, but I have not seen any that build in a MagSafe compatible charger, a Qi charger, a mouse pad, and all this impact protection for your laptop all in one singular device. I think it's really smart. If you guys think it's cool, you can grab one of the link below in the description. Thanks again to Journey for sponsoring this video. One of the things that I think is so funny is despite the number of internal changes that Apple made to the new MacBook Air, one of the things that I have been questioned about most is the new finish applied to the midnight version. So like before, the new M3 MacBook Airs come in silver, starlight, space gray, and midnight. Clearly midnight is the best color here, and you guys overwhelmingly agreed with me. More than 50% of you all voted that midnight was the superior color of the MacBook Air. Apple says they put a new coating on the midnight colorway, similar to the one they applied to the Space Black MacBook Pro that repels fingerprints. Since I happen to have both versions, let's test it. Let's start off like simple, right? These are clean hands. I just washed them before shooting this. So clean, relatively like skin oil free and everything. And I'm just gonna touch both machines and kind of see if there's any residue left on either of them and how much it changes. Yeah, for the, for the most part, I don't really seem to see much on either machine. There, there's not much hand residue left at all, though again, clean hands. So that's not always gonna be the case, right? This simulates some uh, real world environments. Maybe you were eating some chips. So let's stick my hand in a bag of chips. With freshly oiled fingers, let's go ahead and touch both machines and see how they do. Yeah, it's, it's very apparent that more grime shows on the last generation machine versus the new one. Though the new model does not resist all residue. There is still some little residue showing up. Finally, let's use a damp paper towel and wipe them both down and see how easily they clean up. How easily do these fingerprints remove? Unsurprisingly, the new one wins here. Even when wiping down the old machine, you can see like the water streaks of the, of the cloth wiping across it versus the new one. It just removes fingerprints easier. So yeah, to me, it's pretty apparent that the new one not only repels more fingerprints, but is easier to clean. Absolutely a win. You've all been quite vocal and I'm pretty sure Apple's heard you. For the first time, you can use two external displays on an Apple Silicon MacBook Air. Previously, you were limited to one 6K external display. This only works though when the laptop is closed. When it's open, you can use the built-in display and an external 6K display. If you put your Mac into clamshell mode, possibly putting it under a shelf or maybe into like a little stand on your desk, you can use one 6K display and a second 5K display. Personally, I almost always work with my laptop in clamshell mode and having two really large external displays is really beneficial for doing things like editing video. Okay, so a better finish, slightly speedier Wi-Fi, 
faster base storage are all well and good, but it doesn't make for much of a generational upgrade. The real meat of this thing is the M3 chip. It's still an 8-core CPU with 4 high-efficiency cores and 4 high-performance cores. Let's go ahead and spin it up inside of uh, Geekbench 6. These are undoubtedly great gains here on Geekbench 6, both on the single core and the multi-core. This is very impressive generation over generation. The GPU comes in both 8 and 10 core flavors. As I mentioned, both the M2 MacBook Air and the M3 MacBook Air I'm testing have the 10 core GPU. If you're looking at the new models, it's a $100 upgrade for the 13 inch MacBook Air, but if you opt for the 15 inch MacBook Air, it is included by default. There was a small change here in the GPU performance, but it wasn't massive. There was a much bigger change from the M1 to the M2, because in that case, we were going from an eight core GPU to a 10 core GPU. So there was like a big jump there with two additional GPU cores. But here we're looking at a 10 core versus a 10 core. So there's not a ton of generational change. It's definitely better, but not as massive of a leap. Geekbench isn't the end all be all of benchmarks though. So let's take a look at a couple other ones. It'll give you a more rounded picture of what you can expect in terms of performance. In Cinebench R23, the single core score definitely was better on that M3 MacBook Air. The multi-core was better, not by a huge amount, but I'm surprised we did see as much of a benefit here on the single core as we did. We also have to look at Speedometer 3.0, which literally just launched today as I'm adding some of this content here. And again, there's a browser range benchmark and big performance upgrades. And I think this is very important because a lot of people are buying MacBook Air for web browsing. And it's great to see phenomenal browser performance here. Rounding this out, we can look at the Affinity Photo benchmarks. These first two lines are showing off the combined CPU scores and the bottom two are showing off the combined GPU scores. You can see for yourself how much of improvement that the M3 had. The M3 though is more than just a boost in CPU and a boost in graphics. It also packs hardware accelerated ray tracing and mesh shading, AV1 decoding, and even a faster neural engine. Apple's been laying the groundwork with the neural engine for some time, and I think it's going to really come into play later this year. I expect we're going to hear a lot about the neural engine and AI and machine learning at WWDC this June, so be sure you are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss as we get into talking about that a whole lot more. If you're looking specifically at the 13-inch version of the M2 or the M3 MacBook Air, it's $100 more to buy the newer model. Are these changes worth that $100? I think so but it's also very emblematic of how powerful the M2 version of the MacBook Air was, or rather is, since it's still available. You can get a great machine for a grand, but if you can spend a little more, the M3 is amazingly solid. It's not worth shilling out for if you already have an M2 version, but it's perfect for anybody else out there on the market. And honestly, the 15 inch, I think is just an amazing machine, and I did an entire video how this, the 15 inch M3 MacBook Air, is basically my go-to recommendation for anybody looking to buy a Mac. I think it just hits that sweet spot of price, performance, screen size, everything kind of right there in the middle. I think it is a great value. If you're interested in a new MacBook Air, there's links in the description. We've already started gathering deals and discounts on the new M3 version of the MacBook Air, but we also have closeout deals on the M2 versions that have been clearanced out. So check those out down below. If you do end up buying a new MacBook Air, let me know down below in the comments which configuration and color you ended up getting. I'm really curious.